I think, I think, you know, the goal of, of this show is to really just like talk about basketball. Oh my God, JJ. Did it take you that many words to say that your basketball podcast is about basketball? I mean, you combined with the king of ums here. Uh, what sparked the idea? Um, I feel like, um, um, you know, I think, um, <laughs> this has just got to be <laughs> some of the most intellectual content out there. I'm not going to watch it. So I'm, uh, reacting to scap attack. One of the people who has suffered through it. Apparently I think, I think, you know, the goal, I think, I think, you know, four words without saying anything at all. That's a great start, JJ. And we were rewarded by sticking through that sentence to find out that your basketball podcast has a goal of talking about basketball. Hearing arrogant people say dumb shit while thinking that they're being smart is really hard to stomach. The phrase super team or the, the term super team is is a little bit, bit of a misnomer. Oh, here we go. JJ setting LeBron up to explain how his super team wasn't really a super team. And JJ, you don't need to say misnomer, especially if you're going to stutter the first four words leading up to you trying to use an unnecessary synonym that LeBron James doesn't understand unless you had a conversation with him ahead of the podcast so he knows what you're talking about. And it simply means an inaccurate use of a word or a term. So, yes, JJ, it was a term, not a phrase. A phrase is a group of words, maybe something you could have reviewed prior to hitting the record button on your podcast, or were you too busy setting out those goofy wine glasses? I'm not here to talk about that. Let's talk about how absurd it is that LeBron, after JJ set him up to explain that it wasn't really a super team, continues to crap on ex-teammates. I, I believe he ends up calling them minimums, minimals, minimums. <laughs> We didn't have enough as far as enough complimentary guys to actually make it all work. And we still made it to the finals. There it is. There it is. That's the new narrative. It wasn't the failure. It was incredible that they got that far in the first place. LeBron James continuing to try and rewrite history. And everyone said it's a super team, super team and super team that. But we had to build our team around all minimum guys. Oh, there's LeBron's pouty face. There's LeBron playing the victim again. His rosters were so bad, and they built the team around all minimum guys. I would sure love to be on his team so that I could be called a minimum guy at some point later on. Hey, I sure hope I can be shit on by my ex-teammates someday way down the road. While he sits there pompously with a glass of wine across from another cunt. What do you mean build around minimum guys? They were building around you, asshole. And when Spolster realized you're a one-trick pony, everything had to be altered to try to work around your inadequate ass. I already spent time on my 2011 finals breakdown showing how good both Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh were at the time that they joined LeBron James. And LeBron James was supposed to be the GOAT. He was in the GOAT conversation already. If that was true, if LeBron James was anywhere near GOAT status, that by itself should have been damn near enough. Adding Bosh and Wade was absurd. For those of you who don't know, five players are allowed on the court for each team at one time. You just had three out of five with an absurd advantage over everyone else. Just three out of five. But unless the other two are also elite, LeBron just doesn't have enough help. In fact, the entire bench has to be stacked to the gills. Let, let's take a look at something real quick. They foul here, but they don't want to do that. They want to get the ball back. Dwayne Wade with seven on the shot clock. And Lou Heinrich. Blocked for Hazlitt. What a play. Please take a look at the lower left corner of your screen, that is LeBron 
looking very much like the overhyped role player that he always has been and still is. At the top is Chris Bosch, with the ball is Dwayne Wade, and I'm talking about Udonis Haslam, who is the one who finishes with a dunk here, because Haslam was called the heart of the Miami Heat. He was part of the 2006 championship. In fact, he was still playing and dunking at age 42 up until, what, last year? Duncan, back to you, Donis! Oh, my! That 42-year-old man just jumped right out of the building. What's the narrative that you LeBron boys have been taught? That no one is doing what LeBron is doing at his age? Yeah, well, that was a guy older than LeBron by a long shot. I started with Haslam because I can remember the announcers talking about how great he was and how he was an all-around, get-it-done guy. Yet with LeBron, he's been relegated to, what did you call him again? A minimum? Another statistic falling into the abyss known as LeBron James had no help. If you're wondering what this clip is, that's Haslam breaking the Miami Heat franchise record for rebounds. Yeah. That guy sucked. In fact, there's LeBron letting him know that he sucked. Poor LeBron. Those teammates. Maybe if they would have allowed some of those minimums to guard Jason Terry, there wouldn't have been so many blow -bys. And this next clip that I'm going to show you is another minimum player scoring more in the fourth than LeBron did. One more thought on Haslam. He's 6'7". He was given the duty of guarding Dirk Nowitzki most of the time. LeBron James is 6'9". And don't give me this crap about the position lining up. When the need calls, the greats are supposed to rise to meet that need. Not hang out in the wings while other people take the blame. By the way, Haslam actually played great D on Dirk. Dirk was simply unstoppable. I gotta pace myself on the teammate breakdowns. We'll talk about some other Heat players later on. NBA starters, good enough for other people, can't even qualify as good role players for LeBron James. That's how much help he needs. You understand that we could do the LeBron James game hypothetically with just about any great who has played. If you're willing to make all the excuses and give him all these teammates to surround him, just put someone else in the middle of that conversation instead of LeBron James. If anything, LeBron James is making a case that he's no better than anyone else. Everyone is going to benefit by having that elite of a team. Case in point, let's look at who the Heat went through in the finals that year. That was so amazing that they made it at all. I had to read this for a while before I realized who the star was, who the centerpiece of the team was. I guess that was Andre Iguodala back then. <laughs> but hey, Andre had Jason Capono, Spencer Hawes, Antonio Daniels, Elton Brand. How old was Elton Brand at that point? He was born in 1979. Oh yeah, he's old. Craig Brackens, Tony Batie. Don't you even dare talk about Drew Holiday. He was a freaking rookie. And none of you knew who Drew Holiday was until 2020. Jody Meeks, Andre somebody, Darius somebody, Maurice Spade, Seven Turner, Lou Williams, Thaddeus Young. Yeah. Uh, let's put Andre Iguodala on the Miami Heat and LeBron James on this team. What other incredibly stacked teams were in the East? Let's see. The Atlanta Hawks had Hilton Armstrong, Mike Bibby, Jason Collins, Jamal Crawford, Jordan Crawford, Maurice Evans, Kirk Heinrich. Al Horford, Joe Johnson, Zaza, Pachulia, Josh Powell, Josh Smith, Pape Sai, Jeff Teague, Eaton Thomas, Damian Wilkins, Marvin Williams. Okay, so is that a good team or not? Would you be able to put LeBron James on that team, minus one person, and go to the finals? My point is you're so accustomed to LeBron James complaining and making excuses for his failures that you forgot that it's not normal for teams to be stacked to the gills with all the best players in the conference. That is not normal. <laughs> he does it 
and still fails. Just a little detail, if anyone's thrown off by Mike Bibby being listed on the Hawks and on the Heat, apparently the Heat acquired him later in the season, and he was on both teams. Either way, once he was on the Heat, he was nothing more than a minimum, a nobody, another chapter, and LeBron had no help, along with all of these other guys. Can we have a moment of silence? for all the players that LeBron James has shit on and continues to shit on as more opportunistic pieces of crap like J.J. Redick give him platform after platform to be an unrespectable piece of dog shit who craps on past teammates. By the way, with all the emphasis he put on the 2011 squad wasn't the right squad to get it done, uh... Does he not remember history? Because here's what they did with the roster for 2012. They added Dexter Pittman, Ronnie Turioff, Norris Cole, Eddie Curry, Mikkel Gladness, Terrell Harris. The most notable one, Shane Battier. So you're, you're telling us that's what the difference was? What I recall being different about 2012, the Heat once again walked through the pathetic Eastern Conference and then the refs helped them get past the young Oklahoma City Thunder. Well, Scap Attack, thanks for another great video. Those were the points that I felt like talking about at the moment. But for sure, this new podcast is a propaganda cast created simply to try and rewrite history. LeBron James now saying that super teams weren't even super teams.